Welcome friends. Today is Easter. There's an Easter custom where I say Christ is risen and you answer back, he is risen indeed. Let's try. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Wonderful. We were in the season of Lent and now we are at Easter Sunday and starting starting the season of Easter time. Easter changes everything. During Lent, we learned about many of the miracles that Jesus did. He healed people's bodies, like the men with leprosy, the paralyzed man, blind Bartimaeus. He healed people's hearts, like greedy Zacchaeus. He fed 5,000 people with only a few loaves of bread and fish, and he calmed the storm. And now, Jesus has conquered death. It is the greatest miracle of all. Jesus was put to death on Friday and put into the tomb. But early Sunday morning, Easter morning, he appeared alive to Mary in the garden. The tomb could not hold him. It is the greatest miracle of all. Jesus is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Jesus is risen. He, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. So let's go have our story. All right, let's start with our three breath prayer to get our hearts ready. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we light our Christ candle, we remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And no matter how dark it might seem, the light never goes out completely. If we look at our cross today, we are reminded that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried in the tomb, but Jesus is not on the cross anymore. Jesus is not in the tomb anymore. Jesus is alive. Our story today is from all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it tells the story of how much Jesus loved us and the whole Easter story. So let's have our story. The Easter story as retold and illustrated by Carol Heyer. At Easter time, we think of fresh new grass and baby animals and warm golden sunshine. We think of baskets full of candy and brilliantly colored eggs, but most of all, at Easter time, we think about Jesus and all that he did for us. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a manger on the first Christmas day. A great star shone in the sky above the stable and its sparkling light led shepherds and great kings alike to find baby Jesus. They brought gifts and knelt to worship the newborn child, the Son of God. Many, many years before, the prophets had told that this birth would take place and that God's Son would save the world. When Jesus grew to be a man, he traveled across the country healing the sick and the lame and teaching about God. Everywhere Jesus went, people gathered to hear him speak, and little children flocked around him because he greeted them with love and kindness. When the time came for Jesus to fulfill the teachings of the early prophets, he journeyed to the city of Jerusalem with his closest followers, the disciples. Jesus rode into the city on a donkey and people lined the streets to see him. They laid palm branches on the ground to make a soft carpet for his donkey's feet. 
Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem surrounded by love and glory on this, the first Palm Sunday. Upon his entry into Jerusalem, Jesus went straight to the temple where he expected to find people worshiping. Instead, he found merchants buying and selling and trying to make money. Jesus was so angry that he threw the money boxes into the air and chased the merchants away. Then Jesus entered the temple to teach and to pray. The leaders of the temple saw this and saw that the crowd drew closer to hear Jesus' teaching, and they began to turn against him. Inside the temple, Jesus told wonderful stories called parables and debated the law with the chief priests and elders of the temple. The leaders of the temple did not like to see the people listening so closely to Jesus, so they asked him questions and tried to trick him into saying something wrong. When asked what was the greatest commandment of all, Jesus answered, Love God with all your heart. And this I give you a new commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. On the night of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus and his twelve disciples gathered together for the traditional Passover meal. When they were all seated around the table, Jesus took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to God. He tore the bread into pieces and gave them to his disciples. He then passed around the cup so that each disciple could drink. Jesus knew that this would be the last time he would sit and eat with the disciples, but he asked them to remember him in the future by gathering together to share this meal. This was Jesus' last supper. After supper, Jesus and some of his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus went off by himself to pray. When he returned, he found that his followers had fallen asleep. As he tried to awaken them, a large crowd of people arrived carrying torches and weapons. Sent by the chief priests, these men arrested Jesus and took him away. The men took him to the court of Caiaphas, the high priest, where all the chief priests and elders had gathered. Caiaphas asked Jesus, Are you the Christ, the Son of God? When Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say, those assembled ordered him to be taken to the high Roman court and brought before Pilate. It was a custom to release one prisoner each Passover. Pilate went to the people and asked if they wanted him to release Jesus. But the chief priests had stirred up the crowd, and the people angrily shouted for Jesus' death. Pilate let the crowd take Jesus away, and the soldiers put him on a cross. While the soldiers waited for him to die, Jesus' friends gathered around the cross, trying to comfort each other. As Jesus' death grew near, the day seemed to turn into night. Thunder roared and lightning pierced the darkness of the sky. And then, at the moment of Jesus' death, a powerful earthquake shook the ground so hard that the great curtain of the temple was torn in half. Later in the day, one of Jesus' followers took down his body and tenderly laid it in a tomb. A huge, heavy stone was rolled in front of the opening, and a soldier was sent to stand guard. Early Sunday morning, the third day after Jesus' death, a group of women brought spices to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. But they found that the stone had been rolled away, and when they entered the tomb, they saw that Jesus' body was gone. The women were upset and afraid, and they cried out, wondering who had taken away Jesus. Suddenly a man dressed in all white appeared. He asked the women, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The women ran to tell the disciples of the disappearance of Jesus' body. When they heard the news, two of the disciples returned to the tomb with one of the women, Mary Magdalene. They entered the tomb and found strips of linen lying on the ground and the burial clothes folded neatly nearby. The disciples left the tomb feeling sad and afraid because Jesus had been taken away. He was not there. Mary Magdalene remained alone outside the tomb weeping. 
As she sobbed, she heard a man's voice ask her, Why do you cry? Not looking up, she replied, Sir, if you have taken Jesus away, please tell me where you have put him. Then the man said, Mary. And she lifted her head to see Jesus standing before her. Jesus was alive and talking to her. Mary ran to tell the disciples, who rejoiced to know that Jesus was risen. When Jesus met once more with his friends, he said to them, Go throughout the whole world. Tell all the people what you have seen and heard. And remember, wherever you go, I will be there with you always, even until the end of time. This is why Christians celebrate Easter. We remember that Jesus gave up his life because he loved us. And on Easter morning, we rejoice because Jesus Christ rose from the dead and lives. And we know that because of him, we too can live. This is the greatest miracle of all. There is a special song that we sing at Easter time called Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Here are the words. See if you can hear one word that is repeated. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. I'm going to play that song for you and show you some crosses that I have around my house. And maybe this week you can look for some crosses around your house. Did you notice all of the Alleluia's? The word Alleluia or Hallelujah comes from a Hebrew word that means praise the Lord or praise God. Hallelujah is found 24 times in the Old Testament, but only in the book of Psalms. In the New Testament, the word Hallelujah appears only in the last book, the book of Revelation. And it is a praise to God in heaven. In the verse in Revelations, it says that there was a great multitude and they all shouted together, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. Why do we say Hallelujah at Easter especially? Well, because it's a joyous time of celebration. The seriousness of Lent is over. And now is the time to celebrate and rejoice like a huge Easter party. Let's close our time together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. This week, see if you can find crosses around your home, inside or maybe even outside, or you can make a cross and give it to someone special and tell them the story of Easter. As we put our light, our candlelight out today, we remember that even when the light changes, Jesus still is with us and nothing can stop that. You can hear more stories about Easter and Holy Week if you listen to our Paznaz Family Life YouTube channel. God bless you and your family. Have a wonderful week. Remember, God loves you and I love you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Easter cat.